Mr. Thompson, can you stick your head in the hallway and let them know I've called the meeting to order 746? Today is March 23rd, 2015. This is the regular meeting of the mayor and council. I will call this meeting to order. We're not going to have a quorum, and so we will adjourn if they don't get in here. Mr. Emanuel, the meeting's been called to order. If you could please take your seat. All right, we do have a quorum in the room, so I will go ahead and start. Tonight we have no one uh, to give the invocation. If we could have a... Uh, if we could have a moment of silence to, for personal reflection. Thank you. Tonight's announcements, we do have a planning commission meeting scheduled for tomorrow, March 24th, a 6.30 p.m. work session and a 7.30 p.m. meeting. On April 1st, we'll have a blood drive in the community room from 1.30 to 6.30. To learn more about giving blood, you can visit www.redcross.org or call 1-800-RED-CROSS. If you'd like to watch a rebroadcast of this council meeting, you can do so on Comcast Channel 25 at 6.30 p.m. on April 5th. Our next regular scheduled council meeting will be April 13th, a 6.30 p.m. work session and a 7.30 p.m. meeting. And on April 14th, we'll have a Board of Appeals meeting. They'll have a 7 p.m. work session, 7.30 p.m. meeting here at City Hall. Um, we now have the Pledge to the Flag. Will you, uh, you lead us in the Pledge to the Flag, Mr. Uh, Conway? Thank you. Under ceremonial matters, we have Proclamation 2015-04, National Donate Life Month. Whereas one of the most meaningful gifts that a human being can bestow upon another is the gift of life. Whereas more than 123,000 men, women, and children await life-saving or life-enhancing organ transplants, of which over 5,000 reside in Georgia. Whereas the need for organ, eye, and tissue donation grows daily as a new patient is added to the national waiting list for an organ transplant every 11 minutes. Whereas the critical donor shortage remains a public health crisis as an average of 18 people die daily due to the lack of available organs. Whereas organ, eye, and tissue donation can provide families the comfort of knowing the gift of donated organs and tissue endows another person with a renewed hope for a healthy life. Whereas donating life through organ, eye, and tissue donation is the ultimate act of generosity and kindness we Snellville citizens can perform. Whereas LifeLink is Georgia, of Georgia is the nonprofit community service organization dedicated to the recovery of high quality organs and, tissue, and tissues for transplantation therapy. Whereas Snellville supports LifeLink of Georgia's life saving mission. Therefore, I, Kelly D. Kautz, Mayor of the City of Snellville, do hereby proclaim April 2015 as Donate Life Month. <coughs> Further, and Snellville to honor those who have made the decision to give the gift of life, to focus intention on the extreme need for organ, eye, and tissue donation, to encourage all residents to take action and sign up on Georgia's donors registry at www.donatelifegeorgia.org, to discuss the miracle of transplantation as a family, and to make a family commitment to organ, eye, and tissue donation. Proclaim this 23rd day of March, 2015. I don't believe we have anybody here to accept that tonight, but um, if we all will be uh, cognizant of National Donate Life, uh, Donate Life in April 2015. Also, 
Councilman Krause, I believe it's your mission to work on the, um, my mind's drawing a blank, the safety plan for the city of Snellville. Coop, thank you. Something to consider along the lines of donating life is whether or not we have um, defibrillators here in the city of Snellville. Um, if someone were, word forbid, to ever have something happen during a council meeting or a city event, it would be something to look into. We now have some special members from our local Walmart with us tonight. We have Tasha Newsom and Joe Chadwick. If you would come forward, we have a certificate of appreciation that the chief would like to present to you. Mayor, I'd like to take just a minute to tell you why we're recognizing uh, these two associates from Walmart. It's a job that we all have to prevent crime and to keep it from occurring. Uh, it's also our job to take care of our community members. And um, this past month, a lady came into the Walmart store. She was obviously agitated. She was uh, extremely upset by something that was going on, and she was uh, checked out by Ms. Newsom. As she got to the register, she wanted to purchase rush cards, which they're these credit cards that you can call in, get the numbers, and the money's gone very quickly. Um, she had, the lady had received a call from someone claiming to be the IRS, and she was told that she had to get these cards and send this money or they would come to get her, they would put her in jail, uh, all these things, which we all know that, that the IRS is not going to call you to, to come get you. They'll come get you, but they won't. They, they're not, they're not going to call you. Uh, that doesn't happen. But because of her attention to detail and her alertness, she realized that something was going on. But this lady was so uh, traumatized by this event she was adamant that she had to, to go with this. And then at that point, Ms. Newsom got Mr. Chadwick involved. And they were able to call the police department and speak to one of our dispatchers, uh, Barbara Ratcliffe. And she was able finally to convince this lady that it was a scam and that she didn't go through it. So based on the efforts of these two folks, uh, a crime was prevented uh, by their actions. And I just want to take a minute to thank them for what they did and to give them these certificates of appreciation. Mayor, if you would just let me make a comment. I'm a CPA by trade, and um, I get probably, in the past week I know I've gotten two calls from clients. They, they call us first because they've gotten this call from someone saying they're from the IRS wanting to come arrest them and send the sheriff to their house. Um, and we just keep reassuring that it is a scam. Most of the calls are coming out of Maryland. This call came out of Virginia today that my client called me on. So if you can just help people to be aware of it, that the IRS will not threaten to arrest you and you aren't up for criminal charges, um, there's always a system. So just don't fall for it. That brings us now to our minutes. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes from the March 9th, 2015 business and public hearing meeting? Motion to approve the March 9th minutes. There is a motion by Councilman Emanuel. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Kraus. All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Six in favor. All those opposed, you're opposed. The motion stands approved. I have a motion to postpone the executive session minutes of the February 23rd, 2015 and March 9th, 2015 minutes. Motion to postpone approval of the executive session minutes, February 23rd and March 9th. There is a motion by Councilman Emanuel. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilwoman Krause. All those in favor, signify raise your right hand. Six in favor. All those opposed, you're opposed. The motion stands approved. We have no invited guests tonight. We now have Mr. Scott for a report from the, department, from the uh, Downtown Development Authority. Good evening. It's been a while. I'm not going to take a long time. Uh, we actually had some nice slides, but, uh, but 
couldn't get the drive to work, so we're going to improvise here. Uh, the DDA, uh, back in January, we actually had our second annual, <laughs> second annual, uh, annual planning and vision meeting. This time we had it over at Summit Chase. And uh, what, we, what we looked at was uh, affirming what we did last year, what went right, what could have gone better, and then actually looked at what we could build on for, for this coming year. And uh, we took about a half day to do that, and I, I think we actually have good plans in place to go forward. Uh, one, of the, one of the projects we worked on this last year was our Wayfinding Sign Master Program. And I, I'm happy to say that hopefully the, the verbiage is going to be finalized this week. We have a few more uh, tweaks to do between Butch and I. And then the, the DDA will take a look at it next week uh, at a specially called meeting, and once we do that, and then we'll actually send it out to the street so we can actually see how much this stuff costs. Right, so, so one, and the plan right now is that once we actually receive the bids back, and by the way, we, we are expecting multiple bids, we've already been told to expect that, that uh, we're going to look at the budget, look at what, we're, what we have in place, what we have for the next few years, we're going to put together a priority list, and then we're going to present that to the mayor and council. Okay, so, so that's the plan right now. The Atlanta Regional Commission uh, also awarded the DDA in the city a couple of grants. Uh, the first is a technical grant that basically is it's all on them, but they're going to they're going to work with us to give us best practices for public-private partnerships, and that that specifically relates to the Wisteria property, but could could expand throughout the city. So they're working on that right now for us. The second grant uh, is we, we asked for a proof of concept for Wisteria. What, what, what could go in Wisteria that could either kickstart uh, the town center vision uh, or what could go, go there to actually help us create a work, live, play community? And, and the Atlanta Regional Commission awarded us $15,000 to actually put on a proof of concept event, uh, which, is the, which is called the Wisteria City Market. And, and I'm going to have Eric Van Otteren come up we actually formed a committee, and in fact, it's a rather large committee of, of, of the community uh, folks, and he's going to actually share with you what they've done so far, and he's going to actually uh, recognize those guys so far. But if anybody know, wants to know what a city market is, anybody know? No? I have a few, few slides here. It's tough to see this, but but this is actually a gathering place. The, the, this slide is actually in Philadelphia. This is one that I've been to many times, and it's actually a gathering place that is eclectic, that includes um, retail shops, food, specialty foods, uh, produce, just a, a number of things that in, in a gathering place for the community to actually as, as a whole to to come together uh, throughout the week. So that's that's one of those. I'm just going to go through some of these. I know it's. This projector is not great for it, but it, it's the goal is actually you have a central seating area, uh, but you have tons of things within this center to do. So, so the idea for the proof of concept that Eric's going to go through is that we're going to have a 5,000 square foot facility uh, pop up on Wisteria, and we're actually going to uh, have some nice, fun things going around around the, the, the pop up market so that uh, folks can actually get a feel for what this thing is. And the goal is is that we actually are able to gleam enough data out of, out of this proof of concept where we can actually say, is it viable for the city of Snellville? We don't know that answer yet. We're going to find out. Eric? Mayor, Council, just briefly, the committee that's been working on this has been a, a, a broad city committee. Um, Mayor, or not Mayor, Kelly McAloon and I have been working as kind of chairing the committee, but the other members of the committee are representations from the Arts Council, Kirk Bias and Brittany Washington. Christy Linsky from South Gwinnett has engaged her AP class last year and several, last semester, and several of her students have continued into it. Um, and we have a number, probably well in excess of 20 students that have actually volunteered to participate in the day of the event. Um, Kathy from the Senior Center is a regular member and is part of the TUD, the, the, the uh, grant from the ARC. One of the things that this is supposed to be a proof of concept of is, is a live, work, play, but also a, a multi-ethnic, multi-generational event. 
So we are engaging the senior center and there's a senior that's on the committee as well. Um, kind of sideline folks that I keep in touch with but don't necessarily attend all the meetings, public works, the, public, the police department, parks and rec, we're all working closely with those city departments as well to make sure things can be handled the way they need to be handled. We also have three South Gwinnett students that actually have come to the majority of the meetings and are leading the student process part of the piece. And then there is now engagement as well from the Grayson Tech Culinary School and where we've had conversations with Brookwood High School as well. They have not had any volunteers step forward yet, but all three of our city high schools as well have been, been invited to participate in it. As Buddy mentioned, the purpose of this is to put up a city market model and give a proof of concept to the community. So I would encourage you all strongly to mark on your calendars the May 16th date. Um, I'm already talking with, with and, and I talked to uh, Gay on the way in. We may be buying a 5,000 square foot pontoon boat before we get there. I'm not sure of the, way, the rain that we've had. That's the constant question right now. What are we going to do if it rains? We're going to hold the market if it rains. It'll be under a 5,000 square foot tent and we'll figure something out. But we've had a great, a great um, infusion of help from the community and from the people engaged and I, I really moving in a strong way to get the good things done. I think one of the surprise events will be that we are going to have a trolley that will be running in the city center and picking people up at no cost to demonstrate another little piece of a city center concept, but that would be of the trolley. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Scott, I do have a question for the DDA report. Yes. Um, recently, the um, URA had some visioning sessions mm -hmm. uh, regarding the town center, and I know some of those questions did apply to the um, West area. Has there been any collaboration to get the results of that to the DDA? Yeah, all, all of the data is being compiled from the visioning group. The, the URA and the DDA work very closely together. In fact, uh, I would say between a third to a half of our meetings are actually crossover meetings. So we'll actually spend the, the 30 minutes of our meeting with the, D, with the URA, both in session at the same time. So we're actually going to compile all that data and, and then move forward with recommendations. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Scott? Mr. Scott, have you set a day for your specially called meeting? Uh, not yet. Okay, thank you. It, it will be next week. Would you let me know, please? Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Right. We now have Mr. Whitaker with us to give us our annual audit report. I don't know if that was a cut or what, but I'll try to make it fun. <laughs> Anyway, it's good news, whether it's fun or not. So uh, we have completed the audit uh, for the city's uh, fiscal year end, June 30, 2014, and have issued our unmodified opinion on the financial statements, which basically means that the city's financial report is in accordance with governmental accounting standards. Uh, at the end of the year, if you have your uh, audit with you, you can turn to page 14. But at the end of the year, the general fund had a total fund balance of $5 million $864,000 of which $5,764,000 was unrestricted and unassigned. This represents 63.4% of the general fund's 2014 expenditures and 57.6% of expenditures plus transfers. And that's a great position for a city to be in. Uh, the recommended uh, percentage rate is somewhere between 20 and 25 percent and y'all have 57.6 so that's pretty good overall for all the governmental funds the city's balance at june 30 2014 amounted to 11 million three hundred sixty seven thousand dollars of which uh, approximately five million three hundred twenty four thousand was restricted and that's due to your splash monies and uh, and other restricted type funds. They're restricted for basically capital outlay in future periods. The general fund had a positive change in fund balance for the year of $440,000, uh, while governmental funds overall had a positive change in fund balance of $1,420,000. A significant portion of the positive change came from the Splash 3 fund where we just started collecting the monies, and uh, I think we collected 
for the year and didn't use any of it. Uh, and we also received a refund from a previous project of $153,000. As for the proprietary funds, which is your stormwater and your sanitation funds, uh, the operating <coughs> loss in the, in the solid waste fund was $571,000. So you're continuing to lose money in your solid waste fund and having to subsidize that, that loss with uh, general fund monies. Uh, the stormwater fund is doing very good. It's got a, uh, a very good fund balance, uh, and you're able to pay for your uh, improvements through your stormwater monies. Um, some of the capital assets that you purchased during the year, uh, you had four police cars and two motorcycles purchased, costing about $158,000. Uh, the general fund also purchased a $85,000 generator. And you also started work on two major projects, Briscoe Park, which you incurred $112,000, and the Streetscape project, which you incurred approximately $134,000. Um, you still have some major uh, debt on the books. Uh, if you look on page 36, you can see that you have revenue bonds outstanding of $3,177,000, uh, police facilities capital lease $793,000. That will be paid off uh, in this current fiscal year. And you have a DDA capital lease on the Wisteria property of $584,000. Now that is supposed to be paid off, I believe, in uh, the next fiscal year. You have a balloon note that's going to come due approximately $500,000, $600,000. And um, that basically is the highlights. If you have any questions or comments, I'll be glad to take them. The one question on the stormwater, it continues to kind of go down as we move through since we re reset that thing and we're actually using expenses out of stormwater now. Is that, I mean, is that, that still should be the case, right? You're actually uh, using salaries out of there, right? Now, right, right, right. Yeah, salary, I mean, we, we weren't taking the expenses out of the stormwater at one time, then we, we reset all that and fixed it up. So over the next course of two years, I believe, we'll be getting to a point where we need to perhaps reassess or relook at the stormwater fee structure to re invigorate that fund you to could. supply okay yes sir okay uh, but uh, it's it's normal to have other operating expenses coming out of that fund right and uh, at the end of the year you had a unrestricted fund balance of 692,000 right a total fund balance of a million nine hundred fifty thousand most okay. of that's capital okay capital. but it, but it's sometime in the future though it's something we're going to need to address I yes. think is probably okay. that's still on course to happen so look at the fee schedule okay yeah. thanks Appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. There seems to be um, some note passing amongst members of council. I would just caution everybody that we need to have open discussions here from the bench and not make any decisions by note passing. We're not in kindergarten. Um, do I have a motion to amend the agenda to add under old business public hearing item B to move item F from new business to be item B under public hearing? That would be first reading on alcohol ordinance revision and fee schedule. I move that we uh, waive the first reading. Well, we first have to amend the agenda. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, no, I'm not. I'm worried about the notes I'm passing about my council amendment. Is there a second? I make a motion Excuse we me, move Council it on the agenda. Okay. There's no need for that. Do I have a motion to amend the agenda, Mr. Woods? Is that what so you mentioned? Moved. Is there a second? second? Second by Councilman Emanuel. All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. That's six in favor. Those opposed, zero opposed. The agenda is amended. We have then our public hearing item A, second reading for CUP 15-02. This is consideration action on an application by Vineyard Chapel International for church and auxiliary uses at um, 
2110 McGee Road, Suite 2126. This was on our last agenda and was tabled till tonight. Jason, any, Mr. Thompson, anything you need to? No, tell I us just, about? Uh, you were correct. It was on the last agenda, it was tabled. It's a conditional use permit for a church in the Fountain Square Shopping Center. We currently have three. This would make the fourth. Um, I'll answer any questions that you may have from last time or now and then, if that helps. Anyone have any questions for Mr. Thompson? Mr. Thompson, one of the concerns I have is that we now are going to have, we, this will be the fourth church in this retail center. What can we do to prevent this from happening again? Um, as far as in this specific circumstance? Yes. Um, I, I believe the applicant was agreeable last time to conditioning the property to no more than four churches. Um, you could condition it to the point where it's the churches that are in there right now, or and as they leave, that uh, restriction, you know, those go away as they go, or you could allow them to have a maximum of, of four churches at any one time. So we can um, condition it that as those churches move on to other properties or whatever, that they're not replaced by another church. Right. Well, they would require conditional use permits anyways as well, so they would have okay. to come before you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Jason, I just need to clarify. You're saying that on this CUP tonight, we could condition the entire property to say that no more churches could come in. I believe it, so. You can because my understanding is this CUP only stays with this applicant. Say the applicant moved out in a year, then the CUP goes away, so that condition would go away. I, so, I believe the conditions placed on the property. You'd have to ask Mr. Powell. Okay. I mean, I'm not Mr. Sure. Powell, could you clarify that, please? The application appears to be done. It is in the name of the church and with the owner Camco Management LLC. Now the, the description, I think, the description is gonna be limited to the site plan that is this particular parcel. That's where those conditions go to. If the, the planning director is, is assessing the entire parcel that's being shown on that plat as being in play in this rezoning, if that's the way it's viewed when a one applicant comes in, then, then, then the entire parcel is in front of you, and that that really is a call for Jason. If he if he assesses the rezoning to bring the entire parcel into play, as far as this rezoning request, but you've got two descriptions. You've got the description of the of the square footage of the area being occupied, and you've also got an application that reflects the entire parcel, and and that goes to the interpretation of the, of, of your your planning director. Uh, with the understanding that, that the applicant or the owner of the property is here to object if he disagrees. And so. Historically, it's always been the parcel in any of these that we've done. Tenant space or not, any churches typically are the entire parcel, just like uh, the one we did up the road at the Papa John Shopping Center where we placed conditions on the condition of the property to replant some trees and fix the detention pond through a conditional use permit. So historically, the precedent's been set. We did that on the Mission Center too, on the Shell Station, or the Sitco Station exactly. up here. We made them make, mm -hmm. okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. If you could state your name and address for My the record. My name is Shewekuta Mukahanana. The address 901 Blue Sky Ridge, Snellville, Georgia. Question, I, if the property owner, could you join the applicant up? Because I guess both of you can probably answer this question. You know, a couple of weeks ago, one of the concerns I had was that we're loading up our retail centers with, with churches. Okay, and that's, I'm just saying that's, you know, it's a retail center. So there's a concern there. And you have brought the information saying that, that y'all are willing, as the property owners, to limit yes, the number of, of churches that, we, that you currently, if we approve this, and this is where we go. Yes, we are. Okay, and that, that is still okay to do that? Yes, okay. sir. Um, 
the concern I have in looking through the application, and it looks like there's a pretty aggressive growth, which would be good for you. The more you can bring, the better for you. The current space that they occupy, if they grow to their five years, 350 congregants, which is reflective of additional cars and additional so on and so forth, the current 6,800 square feet, 6,900 square feet, will accommodate that growth without expanding into, in other words, if you've got four churches there now and they all grow at that rate, then there's a theoretical idea that they would expand within that complex and not necessarily move, which effectively fills up the retail center with churches. Presumably so. We've only had one church expand, uh, and that was the first church that came in, the Good News Baptist Church. They started in 1,300 square feet, and about a year later, they, they took a, a, an adjacent 1,300 square feet, so they're now 2,600 square feet. That has not been the pattern for the other, other churches. Now, that's not to say it can't happen, okay. uh, but that has not, not been, the, been the pattern. Well, I wanted to just express that, that that's a concern because that's kind of a, a, a different way to fill it up with the current level of churches that's there now. So I just wanted to, and as they expand the areas, if that were be the case, it would need to come back before planning to move into additional spaces or what's the process there, Jason? I'm not sure that we've been faced with that before. Okay. I believe you saw good news Haitian the second time. Okay. Uh, Well, as a property owner, just speaking for me, that, that's, a, that's a concern. I mean, it, I'm happy for the growth, and if it happens, that's wonderful. I'd love for them to outgrow the whole area, to be quite honest, as far as that space. You know, I'd love for them to do that well. Uh, but that's just a concern. And let me make a few comments. Uh, first of all, a whole section of our parking has been totally underutilized, and that's that section up by McGee Road. I mean, you could take a nap there almost any day and not have to worry about anybody anybody running over you. Uh, and then secondly, I think you all are, are already aware, but I'll just remind you that we have a cross-easement agreement uh, with the uh, uh, Fountain Square uh, Business Center, and I have the document with me if you wish to examine it. Uh, but we do have a cross-easement agreement with them, and that parking lot is only slightly smaller than the entire state of Texas. Uh, and it's also totally underutilized. And then there's a timing issue that, you know, all these things are going to happen on a Sunday evening, I mean, on Sunday, when there are typically not going to be shoppers there. Uh, and and uh, uh, so I, I, we just don't see that there, there's going to be, uh, you know, a, a major uh, uh, parking problem. Yes, um, my, my problem is not the, not the parking at all. My, my problem is the retail center being, uh, the, the percentage of that retail center now being dedicated to churches. And um, when you were here ago, two weeks ago, Reverend, uh, please understand this has nothing to do, it's had everything to do with churches in a retail space, not your church. You just happen to be the church that was here at number four. Um, so as you heard me uh, say to uh, our planning director, are you willing, if we condition this property, improve this uh, this CUP, that as these churches leave, you'll allow this this center to go back to being retail in those spaces? Uh, yes, I mean I, I think that uh, uh, that, that uh, Jason Thompson brought up that any new church is going to have to bring a cup application anyway, so it gives you all the opportunity to to uh, to uh, re you know reject. I'll also just say that, that from a marketing point of view, um, we, we, we have had some pretty major commercial real estate companies represent us in this shopping center. Uh, NAI, Brennan and Goddard, I'm sure you all are familiar with them. Uh, uh, Richard Bowers and company, and now it's uh, Hale and Associates. And they have just not been able, and th these are, uh, very sophisticated commercial real estate companies. I know NAI, Brandon, and Goddard very well because I worked for them uh, 25 years ago before I started my own company. Uh, and they're very, very sophisticated companies. And But they have not been able to bring us 
you know, the publics, the, the, the this, the that, that, uh, you know, we would have preferred. So, I mean, so uh, I, I guess the, 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 the point I'm making is, is, is that uh, I, I just, uh, for, at least right now, the marketplace is just not demanding that a publics be there. We'd love to have a publics there. Trust me, we really would. Uh, we'd probably give them a blank piece of paper and tell them to write the lease, you know, uh, but it just, hasn't happened and, and, and some very, very sophisticated people have been pushing it and still hasn't happened. So Thank you, City Council. I'm Dwight Heyman uh, with the uh, LifeGate, one of those churches in that area. And uh, my, of course, I'm going to be, you know, speaking for the churches. And, and my concern is um, some new statistics just that I've run across um, with some other pastors in the Snellville area. And where there's... Uh, you know, there's been a, a great influx, or actually the great white flight of the 70s, and the property values in Atlanta went down, and now there's a resurgence, a revival of properties in Atlanta, and we're, we're spending $64 per month, I believe, on the homeless. In Atlanta, we, in Gwinnett County, we only spend like $1.12, $1.13 per month, and the, the, the issue is coming is that they're moving out here because the property values have switched. And I just, unfortunately, the church hasn't taken, and I apologize for that to any government, that the church hasn't taken responsibility of helping the poor and the homeless. And I think there's, there's a different focus and a vision of churches, much like, a pastor here that I've talked to on about three or four different occasions and ourselves that we're willing not only to help i.e. attract more homeless no but we're we're willing to to transform and change the vision how people think and that's you know instead of give them a fish teach them how to fish kind of a thing and I I, I see that area that if you don't have and, and what's happening in Snellville if you don't have a vision to reach out to the poor, uh, you don't have the heart of Jesus. And he said the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon him to preach good news to the, to the poor. And when you reach out to the poor, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on you. And so we have found as we reach out to the poor, uh, God just blesses that. And it's my prayer that, that Snellville, in which I really love, this shopping center in Wisteria, the, the, you know, you project those scenarios. Everybody's moving this way, you know. So what do we do with those areas? And my cont I contend is, is to reach out to the poor. Instead of having homeless just sleeping in the streets, let the church move in and do what the church is supposed to do. Amen. Thank you. I make a move, a motion that we approve. I'm sorry, I don't have the uh, article in front of me. Yes, COP 15-02. Second. I would just like to weigh in with a comment on why, um, why I didn't support this the last time. And it is, it, it is purely the number of churches in this area I can tell you every church that's come before us for this shopping center in the past, I've supported and voted for. And the reason is that, as Mr. Lane pointed out, you know, a lot of these areas were vacant in this shopping center. And to me, it was better to fill it with something 
um, get somebody down there and let that property owner get some rental income coming in. Um, but at some point, we've, we've got to be careful that we don't forget about, you know, how this property is zoned right now. And, and we have kind of gotten away from that. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm okay with um, Mr. Lane's commitment that we're going to limit the number of churches. I think this would be the last one that I'll support down there, and I'm just letting you know that up front. Um, uh, and honestly, there we approved that one down at, at um, near Rosebud. I've got a little heartburn on that one. Um, that shopping center has historically stayed pretty leased, and, and I don't know why we kind of shoehorned a, a little church in there. I don't know why why I voted for that. And I mean, you think about these things after. Sometimes it's not always the correct decision. But, um, but it is a tough decision because you do want to see these churches come in and, and support the community, and, and I realize all the good that they do. But again, I mean, my job here as a council member is to um, follow what the long-term vision is of the city. And, um, and this is currently a retail space, and until it's made over to something different, um, we need to be careful that we're keeping that character. Mr. Woods, a point of clarification, are you asking for approval of CUP 15-02 with the conditions as recommended by the planning department, or are you um, outlining any new condition? I would just, uh, I'm, I apologize to you, Mayor. I would like to add the condition that uh, this is uh, the last, that this is the last church that we're going to approve in that space. Project. Mayor, if I could recommend. <laughs> yes, the, thank you. The, the, um, uh, in, in your packet, you have a resolution that has two conditions attached to it. Um, in, in, I would, what was just stated is that you are amending this to include as exhibit A the entire parcel track. And with that comes a condition that, that, is stating that the with the agreement of the of the property owner there will be no more church leases on exhibit a as attached thank you mr emmanuel you second correct is that still yes your second? yes i second with that condition and is the applicant and property owner are you in agreement with the conditions yes i'd like to add one thing i voted in favor of this last time and uh, seconded it this time. I don't know how you say no to a church. That's a problem I wrestle with. Uh, however, there are situations where we have a retail location and we keep putting in, it's not that it's a church, it's a non-retail use in there. And I'm firmly in favor that we need to stop that because sooner or later it, you make it impossible for the retail property owner to lease to retail. So while I'm in favor of this, I'm also very much in favor of putting limits on because we have to maintain the character of our different areas so that we can have the growth that we need going forward. Additional discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Six in favor, all those opposed, zero opposed. The motion stands approved. Good luck to you.